Always good to see you. Yeah, man. Always good to see you. Go and and, and, and these songs, what a, what a strong record you've made. Let me start with this song that you just played, A Game in Town Like This. I'm a losing lately gambler, but that's not all I've ever been. Cutting back your losses is just another way to win. Care to explain that, Corkland? Well, it's kind of a metaphor, you know. <laughs> it's like it's kind of a it's like a common axiom in in the card playing world that it's your um, your end result is the is the result of a bunch of sm- small games over your lifetime and in, in in fact it's one big long game. So what that means is in poker, for example, not losing a bunch of money is just the same as winning a bunch of money because mm. it's a plus minus thing, right? In the long run, so that's the literal meaning. And the rest of it's kind of a metaphor for losing your girlfriend. How much of a gambler are you? Um, quite a gambler. <laughs> Literally and, and yeah, metaphorically. Yeah, I like to gamble, but I won a couple hundred bucks on the Oilers last night. <laughs> they beat the spread. You gamble on hockey games? I have been known to, yeah. <laughs> you have been known to, including last night. Yeah, I've always been on the Leafs. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> lots, that's helpful. Uh, I can't imagine that anybody's going to go on, you know, what do you gamble on the Leafs? What do you, what do you, what do you... Well, there's lots you put of money on them winning yeah, every once in a while? How many draft picks they're not going to have next year? <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> you said that uh, this is, I mean, this this album is very much in the pantheon of, of the of the albums you've been creating. And you said that while you have a, a knowledge of traditional country themes, you tend to approach the genre with abandon. How does that abandon manifest itself in the music that you write? Um, lyrically, I... I kind of uh, do my own thing, you know, because I think I think part of it has to do with well, my my life has been a com- combination of growing up pretty Western and cowboy, and then getting into Black Sabbath as a teenager, and yeah. you know, and I think my years in the indie rock world tempered my writing. So so, I mean, if I, I think if if I ended up playing country music and never went through the rock and roll thing, I'd probably be write, writing stuff that's a little more straight, mm. you know. And there's plenty of songs. Western songs already about you know chasing cattle down the dusty trail and stuff and there's an element to that in mind but um, I like to I like to blend it with my own personal modern life experience. It's well, your own personal modern life experience, but also your 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 personal take, which is very Canadian. This is this album's brimming with Canadian references. There's Alberta says hello. There's Long Gone to Saskatchewan that you played. Uh, why is that important to you? You've talked in the past about regionalism being important to you. Yeah. Can you reflect on that? Yeah, I, I don't go out of my way to do it. I just write what turns my crank at any given time, and that's what comes out. I don't really have a mandate to do it. I don't go out of my way to be a cultural ambassador. I think it's just that that's my life and that's my family's life and that's what I know about. You made a joke earlier about the American audiences. Uh, uh, do you do you uh, take pride in bringing these songs in, uh, on an education program? You said you're not an ambassador, but <laughs> but you, you're going to sing Long Gone to Saskatchewan to an American audience in, in Texas and to some of them you, you might have to explain where Saskatchewan is. Yeah, yeah, I point up. <laughs> it no it's it's um yeah i'm sort of proud of it it's tough it's harder to put you know calgary in a song than it is to put houston in a song just because americans are the cultural power in this point in history right so but but yeah i, I don't know i think it's kind of cool I, I didn't mean to go so heavy on this one and it's kind of ironic because this is our first american release yeah we recorded the record in two chunks and the first I love it batch of five songs i said i'm Two of them had prov- provinces in the name, so we'll see how that plays. I don't know. Uh, on the song "This Is My Prairie," one of the songs you played today, uh, you dedicated it to m- to your mom. You take you do take a hard look at oil drilling and the effect it's having on life in Alberta. Can you talk about that one? Yeah, it's tricky for me because I mean I can see both sides of it because I mean, even within my family, like my mom has is um, like we have some family land that we've had for. 110 years or something, they, and they are trying to slow down development there and stuff. On the other hand, my brother's a rigger, right? And I got a number of friends who work in the oil patch. And so it's it's tough for me to, it's really complicated. And I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and bash the guys working in the oil patch because I don't think they're any more hypocritical than you and I are for driving vehicles if we're still burning oil and gas. But at the same time, it would be nice. I think everybody knows we're going to get off petroleum, whether it's five years or 50 years, right? And it would be nice uh, to look back and know that we didn't tear up the entire province, right? Hmm. So, How does that play out in the family, man, between mom and, and your brother? Uh, it's okay, you know. Yeah. They, I mean, it's, it's, uh, we, ha- we discuss it, you know. But it's, it's kind of like, you know, the loggers in B.C. or whatever. It's, it's hard to... I mean, if you live in the city, it's different, I guess, maybe. But but if you know people who have kids, and the only industry in their area is is, is say timber, and they're out cutting down trees, it's it's bad for the tree. It's kind of like blaming the troops for the war, right? Mm. So I'm kind of sensitive about about getting on uh, guys who work in the industry as workers, 
and that, because that can be easily misconstrued. But I think that it's important to uh, take a big, a big picture look at the thing. And I, it really comes down to the government because the only the, the problem I have with it is the corporate stuff, right? Because because corporations in any um, whether it's oil and gas or any other facet of life have no real concern with hu- human beings. Well, what would you like to see done? Be done in, in Alberta. I think that we could do a little better job of uh, of uh, protecting some of the areas. I mean, this is a selfish concern, of course, because our particular place is in the foothills in the southwest corner. But we we that that's an important uh, part of the world, not only for aesthetics but for water tables and uh, you know animal habitats and corridors and stuff like that. So I th- I think we should protect it more. How do you feel about increasingly being seen? Interesting, just reading some of the the press around this record and a song like that. Uh, to increasingly being seen as a political activist or or a spokesperson is that something that uh, you're comfortable with? It's tricky because my my politics are really complicated. It's it's weird. Like I I, I don't really subscribe to the left right thing. I, I have I have a hodgepodge of ideas that I think make sense in a common sense kind of way. And I it's kind of all relative because when I hang out with musicians, they think I'm conservative when i hang out with my guys my friends from home they think i'm a hippie right <laughs> so it's kind of like it's it's kind of relative but i think that how um, do you self-identify you think you, you think of yourself as a conservative person i think of myself as a neo-prudentist a, ne- <laughs> a neo-prudentist yeah. a new kind of prudence yeah prudence i think i think that we're i think that we're too hung up on left and right issues M- more so in the states you know a hundredfold of course but mm. i think you have to look at each issue and, and take it apart on its own merit, and that's that's illustrated by some of the issues that are going in Alberta on in Alberta because you've got sixty-year-old cowboy-headed ranchers who who are, who are standing up and, and speaking out, you know, against some of the oil and gas development, and those guys tend to be pretty conservative in their politics, right? But in that particular uh, realm, they're lining up with you know with the eco people. So so it's not as simple as as you know left left and right to me. Hey man, it's it's great to see you. You and the band are sounding great. The boys are are, are, are just it's all, all sounds very good. Very fine new record. Cool. Good to have you here on the uh, occasion of its release. And and anytime you're you're welcome back. You know right that. Cor Blund, today's Friday Live guest. Uh, the record is called Losing Lately Gambler. It's available on New West Records. Uh, you can uh, see the dates at corblund.com. Corblund.com. We'll put a link to that from our website, cbc.ca/slash Q. 